You called us, my man? A call for help. Oh, we're gonna have an ambulance come check you out, my man. Make sure you're okay. Met with a deadly response. Because I am seriously not in the mood for this dumb With two EMS workers now facing murder charges. Following the arrival of EMS, Earl Moore Jr. became the victim of acts which caused his death. In a Project Illinois special report, we take a deeper look at the case gaining national attention as the family of Earl Moore Jr. searches for answers. Because Earl, life mattered. Thank you for joining us. I'm Stacy Skryzak. It's a murder case rocking the nation. 35 year old Earl Moore Jr. was declared dead at St. John's Hospital at 314 AM on December 18th. Police say Moore called 911 while going through a medical emergency before being taken to the hospital by ambulance. The coroner listing his cause of death from positional and compressional asphyxia from being transported in the ambulance face down, strapped in so tightly two of his ribs were broken, with investigators then labeling the death as a homicide. The charges against the two EMS workers were announced weeks after Moore died, with the body camera video from the responding police officers released hours after the charges were announced. Our Julia Rosier has a closer look at what those videos show. Three officers responded to the home on North 11th Street, where Earl Moore Jr. was staying around 2 a.m. on December 18th. Police say officers responded to Moore's initial 911 call because he reported armed men inside the house. But the woman who met them at the door told the officers Moore was hallucinating from alcohol withdrawals. All three officers went to speak with Moore, who was unable to answer basic questions, prompting the officers to call for an ambulance almost immediately. Earl? It's the police. You called us, my man? You need some help? You know who the president is? You know what year it is, bud? Yeah. Let's start with this. Do you know what uh, your name is? Can you give us that? The officers continued to try to talk to Moore for several minutes and get any information they could, but Moore was unable to answer any of their questions. That's when Peter Cadigan and Peggy Finley, working for Lifestar Ambulance Service, arrived at the scene. This is Earl. I haven't been able to get much out of him. It's day three. Oh. He was up on his bed and he just rolled off onto the floor after he's been slowly stripping off of his clothes. However, Finley appeared agitated over Moore's condition. She's seen not taking Moore's vitals and tells him to sit up and walk to the ambulance or he can stay at the house. Sit up! Come on, Earl. Let's, let's get up, my man. No. Oh. What happened? Oh. Stop. Stop. Sit up. Sit up now. I am not playing with you tonight. Sit up. You're All gonna right. have to walk because we ain't carrying you. So let's let's get up on your feet. Because I am seriously not in the mood for this dumb. The officers then spent several minutes taking turns helping Moore walk out of the house where Cadigan was waiting with a stretcher. Police officials say from the video, it's clear Moore was not able to walk on his own and the medical professionals weren't offering any assistance. Once outside, Cadigan is seen roughly putting Moore face down on the stretcher with Finley and Cadigan tightening the straps. According to court records, the straps were so tight, two of Moore's ribs were broken. The three responding officers stayed on scene until the ambulance left with Moore inside, even commenting on how tightly he was strapped down. Oh, he's strapped him in good and tight. He ain't going nowhere. Moore would be pronounced dead less than an hour later. Springfield police turned over the body camera footage to the Illinois State Police after hearing about Moore's death and requested an independent investigation. 
Thank you, Julia. And less than a month later, that investigation would lead to Peter Cadigan and Peggy Finley being charged with first degree murder. Sangamon County State's Attorney Dan Wright announcing the charges January 10th, saying their actions warranted the murder charges. And that said, defendants tightened restraints across Earl Moore Jr.'s back and lower body in the prone position and transported Earl Moore Jr. to St. John's Hospital in Springfield, thereby causing death by positional and compression asphyxia. Cadigan and Finley are facing up to 60 years in prison if convicted and are still in custody on $1 million bond. On the day the charges were announced, the president of Illinois NAACP said she's grateful to the officers who were there. And um, we we're just grateful they were there and they had those body cameras on because just think if they weren't there and EMS was just called and they showed up and they put this guy face down story, the outcome would be totally different. Teresa Haley goes on to say that the police officers showed compassion to Earl and went above and beyond to help him. Since the charges were announced, Wright has clarified why he feels the first degree murder charges are appropriate. Under the Illinois Criminal Code, the charge of first degree murder doesn't always require premeditation. State law says a person can be charged with first degree murder if they know their actions could lead to death or great bodily harm. Wright argues Cadigan and Finley knew transporting more face down was dangerous and could lead to suffocation, leading to the charges against them. Those charges were upheld in Cadigan and Finley's preliminary hearing after hours of testimony and evidence being presented. A Sangamon County judge found probable cause for the first degree murder charges. Our Noel Ford brings us a closer look at that hearing. The court got its first-hand look at the case and evidence against both Finley and Cadigan at that preliminary hearing. Two Springfield EMS workers, Peggy Finley and Peter Cadigan, appeared as co-defendants in a Sangamon County courtroom in late January for their preliminary hearing. They're both facing first-degree murder charges in the death of Earl Moore Jr. It's what they knew based upon their training and experience in the surrounding circumstances, all of which will be critical facts the court heard testimony from Illinois State Police about interviews conducted with Finley and Cadigan and proper protocols that should have been taken. Illinois State Police further testified that Lifestar Ambulance operates under Memorial Health's guidelines. And under that protocol, under patient restraint, it's highlighted in bold red print to never transport a patient in the prone position. The prosecution argues that Finley and Cadigan knew that placing Earl Moore Jr. face down on a gurney would cause death or inflict great bodily harm. They know the Memorial Protocol that says never put someone in a prone position. So to suggest that EMTs don't know about positional asphyxia and the lethal risks of putting someone in that position uh, is totally contrary to what's presented. But the defense disagrees. What they have not shown is anywhere in here, and I think the testimony was it doesn't exist, at least to the officer's knowledge, anywhere where it says in any of these policies or manuals, if you do put somebody in a prone position, you're seriously causing a risk, a strong probability of death or great bodily harm. Cadigan's attorney also argued that the state doesn't have enough evidence for a first degree murder charge. The implications that are drawn from that tape are contrary to any notion that either one of these people thought they were committing murder. Now, was there, were their acts reckless? That's for another day, maybe. That's a lot different question, and it's a different charge. Finley and Cadigan have agreed to be tried as co-defendants in the case, meaning they'll be tried in a single trial instead of separate trials. Reporting in the studio, Noelle Ford, back to you. Thank you, Noel. During the recent hearings, we also learned more about the ambulance ride between Moore's home and the hospital, including that Peggy Finley did not take Moore's vitals. A uh, patient is slowly combative and confused. He, I'm not messing with getting vitals because I'm not going to poke the bear. That recording was of a call with St. John's Hospital's Medical Intensive Care Unit. 
The hospital told investigators that they did not receive any vitals for more from Cadigan or Finley. Right now, Cadigan and Finley both remain in custody at the Sangamon County Jail on $1 million bond. A judge denied the defense's motion to reduce their bond amount in February. Their next court date is set for March 20th. Still ahead, a family coping with the loss of a beloved brother. I always think about Earl all the time. Mm -hmm. The family of Earl Moore Jr. speaking out for the first time since his death. The memories they shared and the changes they are now pushing for. Plus, hearing from police as the investigation continues what the police officers union is now saying about Earl Moore's death. You're watching a News Channel 20 special report. Project Illinois, a call for help, deadly response. Pastor Earl, you just like fishing, family. Earl he was, was old, so. yeah, he was. He was a mama's boy. Yeah. Since Earl's death, his family has been coping with the loss of a brother and son. Earlier this week, we sat down with his sister, Shatara Moore, and Teresa Haley, the president of the Illinois NAACP, who spoke on behalf of Earl's mother. News Channel 20's Julia Rosier brings us the emotional interview. Earl Moore Jr. died on December 18th, and nearly two months later, Earl's sister, Shatara Moore, says she's still working on processing the loss of her brother. I'm still a little bit in disbelief. I miss my brother a lot, and I just still wish that he was here. She says her brother loved fishing, being with his family, and his longtime job at McDonald's. And this is Earl's sister. Mm -hmm. They fought like cats and dogs. They love yeah. each other. She probably missed those arguments with I Earl. <laughs> I, was, I always think about Earl all the time. Mm -hmm. Earl was a graduate of Lanphier High School. His sister said he loved his job as a manager at McDonald's, where he worked for more than 18 years. Illinois NAACP President Teresa Haley said many people knew Earl from the restaurant and just from around town. Earl walked all over Springfield. Everybody knew Earl. Yes. People who you didn't even think about said, Earl, Earl, the guy that I see walking all the time, the guy Earl that worked over McDonald's. At McDonald's. Yeah. But after Earl's death, Shatara says she really felt the community's support. Earl's death even made headlines across the country. Oh, I appreciate everybody's involvement. I appreciate everybody calling and reaching out to us and telling us that they feel sorry about what happened to Earl. But Earl's family still misses him. Shatara Moore wears a pin on her shirt with a picture of her brother. Oh, that's my brother, that's Earl. That was him on his birthday a couple years ago. Shatara and Haley said despite the actions of the two EMS workers, they were pleased with the Springfield Police Department. Haley said they know that when EMS arrives, police officers' hands are tied. The only thing I think they could have done differently is to tell the EMS workers, don't you think you're handling him a little rough and, you know, you might want to back off a little bit. But body camera video shows the officer say that Moore was strapped in, quote, good and tight and that he, quote, ain't going nowhere. I don't like that part at all. And for them to say, to say that, like, I know they know, but they, they knew. They even said it. Mm -hmm. They even said it. It was disrespectful, and we're hoping, we've talked with the police department, the police chief, sad. and we're just hoping that they use that as a training opportunity to be a little more sensitive, a little more compassionate. <sighs> Both Shatara and Haley say they want to see the bill requiring all EMS workers to wear body cameras pass. This would also require ambulances to be equipped with dashboard cameras. We realize that there's HIPAA laws and, you know, there's some protections there, but outside of those protections, we want more. We don't want to see another person disrespected and treated the way they treated per oral. In January, Earl's family retained prominent civil rights attorney Ben Crump for the wrongful death lawsuit against Peggy Finley, Peter Cadigan, and Lifestar Ambulance Service. But Shatara says the impact of how her brother died will haunt her family. You would think like for EMS workers to come, you would think like them people are someone that will help you, save you. You will be scared now. Like you, you don't know who to trust. Like it's scary. Like them people out of all people. You would never err. I would. That would never cross my mind. And that was Julia Rosier reporting. Shatara says the family will be holding a balloon release later this month on Earl's birthday to celebrate his life. Still ahead on News Channel 20's special report, the search for justice and closure. Transparency helps us get to the truth. The truth helps us get to justice. And we will get justice for Earl Moore Jr. family.
A closer look at the civil fight now underway and the high profile lawyer leading the charge. Plus, looking at the officer's response as the police union weighs in on how police handled the scene. You're watching a News Channel 20 special report. Project Illinois, a call for help, deadly response. There was a horrific incident that happened in Springfield um, a few weeks ago. And if it were not for the body cameras that, um, you know, the police were wearing, there would be so much confusion around that incident and exactly what happens. The actions of Peggy Finley and Peter Cadigan on the night Earl Moore Jr. died came to light partly due to the body camera footage from the three Springfield police officers who were also on the scene that night. News Channel 20's AJ Gersh has more from the police union. Not only does uh, the, the video that's captured uh, show the actions of the men and women of the Springfield Police Department, but it also has the potential to show uh, actions by other individuals, and that's exactly what happened in this case. Shortly after 2 a.m. on December 18th, three Springfield police officers arrived at a home on North 11th Street where they determined that Earl Moore Jr. needed medical attention and called EMS to the scene. Most police officers, they'll come, they'll do a welfare check. That's what these officers did in this situation. They went in, they saw Mr. Moore was in an extreme condition, and they are the ones that called the ambulance. And then when the EMTs refused to help Mr. Moore, they're the ones that actually carried him to the stretcher, uh, which is outside of their training generally. David Amerson is a staff attorney for the Policeman's Benevolent Labor Committee, SPD's union representative. I truly believe that these officers acted well and commendably. He says governing law enforcement bodies have determined that those three officers did everything by the books, did nothing wrong, and went so far as to commend them in their response. Once the EMTs are on scene, the officer's job is to get them to the EMTs, and once the EMTs take it over, just take a step back. Amerson says it's not part of the job description, for officers to provide medical help. We're putting a lot more on their plate. Um, so if we also want them to have advanced medical training, I'm sure the officers would be okay with that, but I don't know if the taxpayers want to front the money and time and effort that goes into that. Two internal investigations were completed, clearing those three officers of any wrongdoing in the death of Earl Moore Jr. We had three officers with their body cams on. We had ample evidence to see what the officers did or didn't do. So I think it was pretty easy for the department to say, hey, there was no policy violation here. And it was also easy for Illinois State Police to say there was no criminal conduct on these officers. In Springfield, I'm A.J. Gersh. The police and fire departments are already making changes after the death of Earl Moore Jr. Right now, the departments are testing a policy where if a police officer requests medical assistance, firefighters will accompany private ambulance crews to the scene. Still ahead, a family's fight for justice as Earl Moore's case brings a well-known lawyer to the capital city. Plus calls for action as the push for change makes its way to the state house. You're watching a News Channel 20 special report. Project Illinois, a call for help, deadly response. Justice for Earl. Justice for Earl. Justice for Earl. With Peter Cadigan and Peggy Finley now facing trial on criminal charges, Earl Moore Jr.'s family is also looking for justice in civil court. His family has filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Cadigan, Finley, and their employer, Lifestar Ambulance Service. In that complaint, Moore's family says both Finley and Cadigan breached the standard of care when responding to the scene. The family seeking damages for physical pain and suffering, as well as mental anguish, along with medical and funeral expenses. But the family is not alone in their fight, with nationally known civil rights lawyer Ben Crump leading their legal team. Crump has gained notoriety in high profile cases, including those involving Trayvon Martin, George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery. He says the circumstances of Earl Moore's death make it imperative the case gets national attention. Nobody, nobody would say that you put a person face down on a stretcher and then strap a man. I mean, that is blatant disregard for his health and welfare. This video should be a teachable moment, not just for the community, but for the industry of first responders. 
Crump goes on to say that the defendants acted against the purpose of their job. These are EMT workers, first responders, who it is their primary objective to administer to a person's health and safety. But they did the direct opposite. They affirmatively acted to impair his health, to cause him to suffer. President of the Illinois NAACP, Teresa Haley, says having Crump's involvement will help bring more eyes to Earl's case and create positive change. He is the attorney for justice. We see him as a younger version of Johnny Cochran. And when the families call, he's there. Mm -hmm. And he's not just there because he's there. He's there because he cares. Yes. And he wants to make a difference. He's changing laws all over the United States. People internationally are watching him now. Haley says she hopes that Earl's death will spark change both in Illinois and across the country, and she will continue to educate the community. Still to come, pushing for change. The proposed legislation aimed at keeping first responders accountable in the wake of Earl Moore Jr.'s death. You're watching a News Channel 20 special report. Project Illinois, a call for help, deadly response. Some Illinois lawmakers are already working to make a difference after the death of Earl Moore Jr. Senator Doris Turner proposed a bill in early February to require all EMS workers to wear body cameras while on duty. The bill is already supported by the NAACP, with an EMS attorney also saying the industry will most likely support the idea. The idea behind uh, body cams and dash cams is fundamentally sound. It's, it's a good idea. I'm, I'm certainly not opposed to it. I think uh, many in EMS see the benefit of it. Since the bill was introduced, Senator Doris Turner says it's been gaining support in the General Assembly. She says there's also been progress in dealing with privacy concerns within the legislation. News Channel 20's Julia Rosier filed this report. The bill would require EMS workers to wear body cameras when responding to service calls. Ambulances and other medical transports would also be required to be equipped with dashboard cameras. The videos would be kept by employers for at least six months, but not everyone will have access to the body camera footage. Only the person who called for service, attorneys, and law enforcement officials can request it. I think that uh, privacy is one of the things that comes up, and I think that we have addressed that in the le in the legislation. I think that that addresses any um, you know concerns that people would have around privacy. The bill comes after two LifeStar EMS workers are charged with first degree murder. Peggy Finley and Peter Cadigan are accused of strapping Earl Moore Jr. face down to a stretcher, resulting in his death. There are federal privacy protections like HIPAA uh, that would also have to be considered. There would be requirements for how those uh, image files would have to be stored and retained and for what purposes they could be used and disclosed and shared. All of that would be subject to uh, federal law. But there are still some unanswered questions in the bill. Senator Turner says she's still unsure how much those cameras and storage will cost and where the funding is coming from. I just think that this is a good, a good piece of legislation that will go a long way with ensuring um, public safety. And I think that, um, you know, Illinois would be a trailblazer in, in this regard. If passed, the bill says the Illinois Department of Public Health would have one year to comply with the regulations. Right now, IDPH is reviewing the proposal. Senator Turner hopes to have the bill on Governor J.B. Pritzker's desk this spring. We'll be right back. Thank you for joining us for our Project Illinois special report. Peter Cadigan and Peggy Finley are set to be back in court on March 20th for a pretrial hearing. Right now, their lawyers and Sangamon County State's Attorney Dan Wright are in the midst of pretrial preparations, which includes motions over what evidence will be allowed in the trial. Of course, we'll continue to track this case as it heads to trial and the changes Earl Moore Jr.'s death sparks. Have a good night.